Hey, this is Darren Waller, tied in for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Cuckoo, cachoo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Goo goo gajoob indeed. Mm-hmm. It's a whole lot of goo goo gajoobin on the field last night. Yeah, yeah, and you know who really, really loves Darren Waller? Darren Waller? Well, I mean, we're all supposed to love Derek ourselves. Carr? Uh, oh. Derek Carr. No, Chris Collinsworth. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah 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 yeah! He's in love. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I heard him say those those kind words. Yeah, I mean, every single play he made, you got a whole diatribe on how athletic he is mm-hmm. and how fast he is and how surprisingly fast he is. All and- due respect to Travis Kelsey, but that guy sucks compared <laughs> to this man among boys. I guess we had our all, all the good tight ends were in one game. Uh, <laughs> all both of them. It's <laughs> it's funny because that was. Uh, that was the fantasy football community last year, <laughs> like yeah. the, before things really got heated up with with Darren the Walrus. Yes, we're all like, "Holy crap! Look at this dude's measurables! If he gets the opportunity to eat as he should, it's yeah. going to be great." Yeah, no question. He was uh, he was awesome. <laughs> oh yes. So welcome to the bandwagon, Chris Collinsworth. Oh. Get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> We're driving. I love it. I love it. That's true. He was a, a featured UDK sleeper before he was before anybody knew. We knew him before anybody else knew him. <laughs> we were the only ones who called that. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's Monday, November twenty third. We do have a Monday night football game coming up. More football. Uh, I noticed that since the time change happened, I'm getting a lot more of my wife seeing me watching, you know, the Sunday night games or something on my phone and saying. There's still a game on, because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, those are going longer into the night. But it was a uh, it was a fun weekend. It was a uh, an exciting one. We saw Taysom Hill on the field for the first time as a quarterback, and he looked pretty good. Not too bad. And uh, we do have our Monday Punday one liners mm. to reflect on this fine mm. week of fantasy football. <clears throat> yes, I will start this one with Clyde Edwards. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason. Go ahead. Gleaning <laughs> Allen. Uh, Mike Thrilliams. <laughs> oh, and yes, Travis Dolgum. Yeah. Mm, Matt yeah. Crying. <laughs> Matt <laughs> Crying with no Julio. Yes, every time. It's like Julio's good. Uh, Darren Baller. <laughs> yes, and this one doesn't make much sense, but Justin Sherbert. Sherbert? <laughs> Sherbert's delicious. Yeah, Sherbert's Justin good. Justin Sherbert. Who doesn't like Sherbert? Jason, you want oh, me to take this one? No, I got, I got this one. I'm in the casket. Holly Woof Brown. <laughs> Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. Uh, Fadrian Peterson. Oh, yes. And P- Pua. Pua. <laughs> Tongue of Viola. <laughs> Why are we doing that to poor Tua? Because uh, if your name can get close to... Oh, I forgot he got benched. Yeah, he got straight benched after his 83 passing yards. Yeah, they they replaced Pua with uh, Fitz Craptrick. <laughs> I like uh, it. I like it. Try it out. For size, it was a. Uh, Do we know definitively if that was a benching or an injury? Yeah, we know definitively it was a benching. Okay. There was no injury to Tua. Flores came out and said he felt at that time of the game, Fitzpatrick gave him the best chance to win, and it's true. He yeah. did. I mean, they were very close. Tua was getting, uh, you know, out out schemed. He had six sacks at that point, and he had only passed for eighty three yards, and they were down by double their score. So, if you want a chance to win the game. It didn't look like it was going to be Tua. I'm telling you, it reminded me so much of years ago. The Cardinals had Matt Leinart, who they drafted at pick 10 or whatever it was, and he would start games, and then when they needed some sort of jolt, they'd bring Kurt Warner in for these two-minute drills. I will say that does not speak well for the future of Tua because that didn't work out for Leinart. No, and Leinart was left-handed, so obviously the comparison is oh, per- no. it's perfect. Uh, but that does mean P- Fitzpatrick ends up in the Super Bowl. Right, which – and, and, we, and Hall of Fame. We all win. If if Ryan Fitzpatrick is in the Super Bowl, we all win. It is. 
it's just tough. Like we were talking about what's your best chance to win the game versus what's your best chance to maintain confidence of a young quarterback where, look, you, you don't want to uh, looking over his shoulder every time he makes a bad pass or a bad read as a rookie, which is how it's going to feel unless there was a very transparent understanding between the, the head coach and the, the young quarterback. I, I think the confidence question, the confidence issue of are you going to hurt your quarterbacks long term, I think that's overblown. I think that's more media than reality. If you're a really, truly great quarterback, if you are going to be, if you're going to have a great career, a, a benching is not stopping that. If anything, it's going to propel you forward to that. I can't imagine that, you know, if, 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 you know, if Peyton Manning got benched after a couple bad games, oh, his career is just going to fall apart. Correct. But now if Tua doesn't pan out, we can blame this, right? Right. For sure. It's 100% because of the benching. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jason, we had some very exciting water bets. So I just wanted to <laughs> I wanted to go over the results there. I We bet Matt Burita versus uh, Salvin Ahmed, and oh. uh, I won that bet. You mm -hmm. won handedly. We got a notification early in the first quarter that uh, Ahmed is questionable to return. I was like, yes, because I lost as soon as the first snap. I mean, that, that was really what the question yeah, was, was, who's the, the starter? And it was Ackman, for sure. It wasn't Breida. So you, you win that one. And then you won the second bet. But it was a it was a good bet. Uh, Mike Williams ended up 4 for 72 in a touchdown. Rashad Perryman ended up 2 for 54 in a touchdown. They both had good games. Which is the way I'd like the bets to go because if somebody likes you more and goes your direction or likes me more and goes my direction, you both were happy You're for fantasy winners. football. <laughs> That's why I benched them both. All oh, righty, all righty. But, and that's uh, what you get. <laughs> that's, that's what you get for not playing Perryman, Mike. All right, let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. I benched them both. I love it. A zinger. That was a zinger. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, a little pistol over here. <laughs> he's a real pistol. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I hear Judge Giamatti chuckling back there. Uh, Joe Mixon placed oh, on oh. IR ahead of week 11. This was news we didn't get to talk about on the show. It was a bit ironic because on the show, we're like, well, if they didn't throw him right back on IR, it must not be that bad. And then they threw him right on IR, so it is bad enough. They're not going to let him play until he's 100%. And what that means is that the earliest that can be now is week 14. I think we may have seen Joe Mixon for the last time for this year. Well, I mean... Considering the next bit of news, Joe yes, Burrow suffered is, a torn ACL. It this has is, been compounded now. Yeah, it's really burying the lead. I mean, this could be the biggest story of the week, not so much fantasy-wise. It does certainly hurt the trifecta of wide receivers. It really seen, hurts T. Higgins. T. Higgins and yeah. Tyler Boyd have been weekly starts, and I don't think you could do that anymore with confidence. But Joe Burrow going down, a torn ACL, done for the season. Devastating. It's so sad because yeah, it sucks. this is a young man who just looks outstanding. He's got a very bright future. Yeah, and uh, it hasn't been smooth sailing for Geo as the backup to Mixon either, so kind of a Cincinnati problem right mm -hmm. now. All right, Kyler Murray, you saw him on Thursday night, diagnosed with an AC joint sprain. Not expected to miss any time, so that's good news if you are a fantasy manager of Kyler Murray. All right, uh, Rex Burkhead. Knee injury. Is that ACL confirmed? Uh, I don't know if it's confirmed. That's what the concern was. That's, that's what it looked like on the field. It was it was a, very apparent to the players right away that Rex Burkhead was really hurt. Some might get the news that Burkhead is likely out for the year and say, well, this is good news for Damian Harris. I actually don't view it that way uh, because with Burkhead out, Sonny Michelle had been activated from IR but was inactive in this game. He is not a pass-catching running back. But he will be active now. You will have Damian Harris, you will have James White, and you will have Sonny Michelle. So even if Harris loses a few more early down type of snaps to Michelle, that'd be a negative. Unless you think they're going to use him in the passing game, and I just think no. James White's J going to be the beneficiary. James White is the beneficiary here. He becomes someone that I think you can flex on a weekly basis now. Hey, Julio Jones. Hamstring tightness was <laughs> off the field, and um, that was bad news for Matt Ryan. I mean, yep. Matt Ryan, we've, we've, we've been talking about it, but it's absurd. He's either the greatest quarterback out there when he's got a healthy Julio or he is just a trash panda who can't do anything. <laughs> he's just so <laughs> bad without Julio. And, and Julio missed, even though he, he was there in the beginning, he was there in the end, he missed a, a large chunk of this game and 
didn't seem can like we, himself. Can we was title this uh, Rulio Eleven? Ooh, yes, we can. Okay. And I think you All right. did. All right. Uh, Lamichael P. Ryan ankle injury, third quarter. Uh, not injured. Frank Gore, fifteen for sixty-one and a touchdown. Yeah, and the uh, the old we're gonna give Lamichael P. Ryan a, a good looking at turned into Frank Gore as the starter and getting a bunch of carries. P. Ryan ended up getting a touchdown because he uh, Gore got a little bit shook right before they scored, but. But he wouldn't have. <laughs> no, no, and LaMichael would not have scored. Adam Gase is Gase going to Gase. Well, what's what's crazy all is over the, place. the offense does seem to move better with Joe Flacco. It does. And uh, Adam Gase, you know, he took matters into his own hands, took over play calling in the second half, and they were threatening. Made it a close game. Yeah. Two up bench in the fourth. We talked about it. Um it's important because if, if Fitzpatrick is somehow inserted back into this lineup at some point, yeah, I mean, they, it they, improves the situation for uh, you know Devontae Parker and the backs out of the backfield. It was crazy to watch him come in, and immediately it's like Parker, reception, Kosicki, reception. It's like, okay, this, this offense is moving. But obviously the reason that you might not want to go with Ryan Fitzpatrick was the end of that one minute drive where he threw the interception and all your chance to win went away. That's kind of what he does. But Tua was and and is the starter going forward. He's already been named. He's the starter next week. So there you know, just something to keep your eyes on and don't have confidence. Don't in, play Tua. Yeah. Certainly don't play Tua. All right. Drew Brees was uh sent to injured reserve. Ian Rappaport what said that wimp. the rea yeah what eleven <laughs> the, the, the eleven fracture, broken ribs the the fracture count of his ribs just keeps going up I don't even know I did not know you had that many ribs I assumed you got uh, well like a four pack on each side or something how do you break eleven uh, you have a, a no, three hundred pound I, man I, fall I, on I you <laughs> it's unbelievable yeah I, it's probably up to like eighteen fractures now the fact that his like when he got up from that injury. His face looked like a little bit off, like uh, something might it, be wrong. It, it definitely looked a bit pale. I didn't realize how tough he was then. Yep. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, he already was dealing with some rib problems, and they just got compounded or fractured. We have this from Al Borland because this is the kind of research we our producers do for us. The vast majority of people have 12 sets or 24 ribs. Hold so, on, hold on. There's, there's a key point in this sentence. <laughs> the vast majority... As in, there's a, there's a, a an anomaly when it comes to ribs. I wonder it if says people born with certain conditions may have too many or too few ribs. Ah, uh, okay, that but makes the sense. average person I that makes don't. sense, no matter their sex. Can we do? How do you count how many ribs you got? You just well, well, you need I can't do it. I'm I'm too ticklish. Need the xylophone <laughs> handles. Yeah, I, can't, I, can't, I go one, two, <laughs> three. Oh, I got three ribs. You just turned into the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> I I felt more like the Tootsie Pop uh, owl. Yes. Oh, oh one. one. <laughs> A two, a three. I've got three ribs. Jason's got three. All right, we settled that. Uh, the 49ers on by uh, did place Brandon Ayuk on the reserve COVID list. Something to pay attention to. They should have Debo back right after this uh, break. They should. Yes. Okay. Okay. You guys want to talk some studs? Yes, please. This week's fantasy stud muffins. All right, I got to give some props to uh, my co-host here, Jason Moore, who just absolutely smashed his start of the week pick. And I'll be honest, when you when you mentioned it, I was a little worried for you. Deshaun Watson against New England, getting Stephon Gilmore back. You know, you brought up the fact you thought he'd have a good game, but you also brought up the fact New England generally doesn't give up fantasy points to the quarterback, and yet you stuck with it. You dug in. And here's Deshaun Watson going for 344-2 and two with a, uh, a rushing touchdown on top of that. Had an outstanding game. He's currently the QB4 in fantasy points per game from week five on. Yeah, he's, he's been outstanding. I mean, he, he's an, a smash every week play. And the only game where he wasn't, um, you know, um, unbelievable, he was still the quarterback 16. That was the horrific 35-mile-an-hour wind game. I don't even know how he was the quarterback 16 in that weather. Outside of that game, he's been top 10 every week, and half of those weeks, top six, and two of those weeks, top top one, he's been the number one. Ah, so he's somewhere in the top one. Somewhere in the top one to one. All right. Uh, I'm not sure who's more in love with Justin Herbert, Mike, or myself, but um, we're both vying for his attention. Another I will spectacular say this. week. One of us has, was never uh, proclaiming a shoe would drop. 
Oh, it's Mike. Mike wins. <laughs> Mike 100% wins. There is. Oh, man. Andy hates Justin Herbert. Yeah, take that, loser. 37. You never believed in him. 37 for 49. <laughs> 366 and three. Uh, you heard it here first. Justin Herbert will never have a bad game in the National <laughs> Football League. He is so fun to watch. Uh, I tweeted this morning my all favorite players to watch play football team. Herbert's at quarterback. He's just got a sniper rifle. I mean, he's just, other than Patrick Mahomes, I, I threading the needle on some of these throws, the, running to your left, the, the touchdown to Keenan Allen, was like uh, it was a teleportation ball. It was unfathomable. And you know what good quarterbacks, good young quarterbacks do? They throw the ball to their best players because it gives them the best chance of success. How many targets did Keenan have from oh, Justin I, Herbert? Was I don't know. Almost twenty. I think oh. it was uh, eighty-two. Eighty-two uh, somewhere targets. Somewhere around there. <laughs> now, do you worry about do, uh, long term? Do you worry about nineteen Keenan, targets? Nineteen. Wow. Do you worry about Keenan Allen's ribs? Just being shattered <laughs> by the oh, by the football. <laughs> just, he's throwing a little hard there. I wouldn't be surprised, but no. Uh, Justin Herbert, another outstanding game. Uh, he could very well win people fantasy championships. I mean, <laughs> for sure, he's winning people games right now. So here's an interesting question: We have a super team in our league of record who has Kyler Murray and Justin Herbert, mm. and so he plays Kyler Murray every week, right? That's what you do. Of course. Do. Who do you play this week? This week. You know, you've got the Buffalo matchup, which is not bad, I don't think, for Justin Herbert, and you've got the New Orleans, the New England Patriots for Kyler with a bum shoulder. Would you be bold enough to bench Kyler nope. for Sherbert? No, all right. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think. I don't I think I'm either. bold enough. I think I might be. That's... I think. Would you do that, Mike? No, I. I You're worried out. that the shoe's going to drop for Herbert. Oh man, you heard no. it here. Mike nope. hates <laughs> never Justin Herbert. Never. No Cinderella uh, problems here. Oh my god! No, <laughs> no, he's not turning into a pumpkin against Buffalo. Maybe the next week against New England will be the test. If if he torches New England, I will be because that is the perfect. There are certain teams, right? The That's Steelers, the shoe bowl, the, the shoe bowl, <laughs> the Steelers, and and the Patriots in particular, and the Ravens. If those defenses go up against a rookie quarterback, they mm -hmm. disintegrate them. If Herbert takes care of New England, um, you know, just give him the no rookie pumpkin, of the year. No right pumpkin, there. yeah. Taysom Hill, Huber, went eighteen for twenty three for two thirty three. <laughs> was that was a brother that? and a bro? It was who oh, brother. <laughs> it was a who bro. <laughs> <laughs> he went ten for fifty one and two on the ground. Um, you know, this was. A pretty impressive game, I think, specifically protecting the football uh, when passing. You know, no interceptions was key here. This, if you're on ESPN and you were dealing with Taysom Hill as a tight end eligible player, I believe that will end this week. He yeah. will he will be moved out of tight end eligibility. He's not there in other platforms, but it was a nice ride. And you're going to have to think about Taysom Hill as a quarterback. You do need to think about it. Uh, I mean, you you could probably just plug him right in. 10 for 51 and two scores on the ground. That's the type of stuff we like to see from our streaming fantasy quarterbacks. Atlanta, though, it while they had been playing, they had a, a couple rally games once Dan Quinn was fired. The real Atlanta Falcons defense has been showing back up. So it, it's the, I'm not crowning Taysom Hill just yet. I, so I would crown Taysom Hill as a, as a weekly start because of the rushing capability, the same way that, you know, you would start Lamar Jackson and you, you saw greatness last year, but the same way that Lamar Jackson is moving the football against this Atlanta defense, he still only threw for 233 yards. You divide that up when almost everything's going to Michael Thomas. And I think there should be worry for other Oh, yeah. options in the offense. I, I had dropped Jared Cook. I was fine with that after the game. But Alvin Kamara is the real question mark here because the scheme with Taysom Hill versus the scheme with Drew Brees is very different of the pocket is collapsing. The play is breaking down. It's been one and a half seconds. It's usually a dump off to Kamara. But now Taysom is moving in the pocket, scrambling. A lot of designed rollouts already where, you know, you – When's the last time you saw a designed rollout for Drew Brees? They're, they're not too often. Well, this was the first time in his career that Alvin Kamara did not catch a pass. And uh, you're, you're talking about bringing up Lamar Jackson is a great point because when a quarterback can run, they're not just looking to dump off to the running back. Like, 
Drew Brees dumping the ball off to Alvin Kamara, that's his version of being a mobile quarterback. When you don't have to take that option because you personally can run, look at the receptions for Lamar Jackson's running backs. It They, they pretty much don't exist. And we've talked about the fact that Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Latavius Murray gets a lot of work on the ground, and we were I was kind of shocked in particular with Taysom Hill being under center so often. There was not a lot of shotgun for Taysom Hill where – you know, the flare out from Alvin Kamara is a lot more conducive to that situation mm -hmm. than it is, you know, uh, play action passing, simplifying the offense. And Michael Thomas, like, we shouldn't underestimate the value of Michael Thomas being back in the offense, at least contributing to the volume that Alvin Kamara would have gotten in the passing game potentially uh, from Drew Brees. But no, this was not a coincidence that the first time in his career this happens, Taysom Hill's the quarterback. Yeah. But it. But what do you do? I mean, it's not like you're not playing Alvin Kamara. He was still the running back 22, but that was on the back of his touchdown because you saw 14 opportunities, which is not un that uncommon for Alvin Kamara, but 13 carries and if, one target. Man. If your trade deadline is still open, I am looking to shop him based on the name and people not realizing because he had a good game. It wasn't like he was terrible. You're talking about Kamara? <clears throat> yes. I, I would be willing to try to capitalize, shift, pivot. I guess I'm wondering who. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, what names other than Dalvin Cook can you overtly say I'd rather have than Alvin Kamara? Derrick Henry. You aren't getting Derrick Henry for Sure, Alvin yeah. No, you, you you might not. But I'm just saying okay. if you can pivot to a top option, even an Aaron Jones. Top option. Yeah, top option, <laughs> yeah. as we say. Uh, yeah. Rivers, Cousins, Rodgers, Carr, uh, all nice games. Rodgers is uh, solidified every week right now as – an absolute stud, and uh, Rivers got another victory. And shout out to the Raiders fans out there because I thought you were going to get <laughs> – Andy's raising his hand. I thought you were going to get yeah. boat raced, and apparently you are the kryptonite for the Kansas City Chiefs almost winning that game. Almost. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you did, they, they won the first matchup. They almost won last night, and uh, they yeah. have a nice record. I mean, kryptonite doesn't usually win – Superman still prevails, but it's like, oh man, that really for hurt an him. episode. Yeah, for an exactly. episode, Kryptonite seems like it's winning. That's right. Okay. Before we move into our running back studs of the week, <clears throat> Foot Clan, you know what we've been talking about head and shoulders nonstop this season. And this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head and Shoulders and Walmart because it's all about taking it up to one hundred. That's what Head and Shoulders is doing this year because they know that when you when you don't settle for anything less than a hundred. You're, you you end up with people you, you don't wash your lucky jersey you because you you don't want to wash that you don't want you want to take that thing up to 100 you got to keep it at 100 and head and shoulders is keeping your hair at 100 because they give you up to 100% dandruff protection that means you use this regularly you can prevent up to 100% of visible flakes and get the hair that looks 100% amazing I don't mean to brag or boast, but I'm going to. Someone's hair is at 100 right now. I think it's yours, Mike. And it is mine. Oh, Andy's hair right. is always right. at 100. Jason's hair is always at about 80. He, But that's about the tops that Jason can get for his <laughs> hair. For his I'm hair. trying to take it to 100. <laughs> get body. <laughs> uh, Ouch. Thank you so much for Head & Shoulders for sponsoring the show. And if you want to take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders, it is available online at Walmart.com and at Walmart stores. You can pick yours up today. And we want to thank Simply Safe. They are who we have chosen to protect our homes, our studio, and 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 look. There's almost always a rise in break-ins during the holidays, and Simply Safe right now has a huge holiday sale, up to fifty percent off any Simply Safe system, and a free security camera. You 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 can't value that security footage enough, where you get to watch and see what happened while you were sleeping or while you were away. It's very nice. This is high, very, very Santa Claus. Yes. This is high quality equipment that you get to set up very, very easily. That's why U.S. News and World Report called it the best home security of 2020. Brooks just got a house. He set up Simply Safe. This is a really, truly good way to secure your house. No this one's what, getting Brooks gems or his jewels. No way. Uh, this is what we personally use. They have, you know, sensors, cameras. They're going to protect every inch of your home. They will monitor no contract. It's the way to go. You can get up to 50% off Simply Safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com slash footballers. Go today. Uh, this deal is this week only. So that's simplysafe.com slash footballers, simplysafe.com slash footballers 
All right, running backs. Let's talk about some big time performances. Hey, Dalvin Cook, he's good. He he played well, and uh, he's he should be in your lineup. Mm -hmm. But what about Clyde? Clyde Edwards, hello. <laughs> he got it done. It was his first multi touchdown game. Uh, that all you had to do was play against him in fantasy, Mike. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> Clyde Edwards a layer. I mean, he you it's you know, I'm on record. He's my dude. I love Clyde Edwards a layer, and he's been a little bit up and down for for fantasy he in fact has three games inside the top 10 and in our league of record i have faced him in two of those so thank you Clyde edwards alaire for we found the dismantling secret. me yeah we found it uh derrick henry great game uh, melvin gordon 15 for 84 and two and it should have been three he fumbled <laughs> on the one inch line which uh turned him from being a three touchdown uh, running back into two touchdowns with a fumble lost eight point swing. And I was happy to happy <laughs> to have it happen. I, I was facing Melvin Gordon, which was not great from uh, our own producer, uh, Al Borland here. And, uh, but he look, he, he looked f fine. He looked good. And, and I didn't think that the, this was a player you should be starting. Really? I, I didn't, you know, since Philip Lindsay has been back, he's had a lot of bad games, but I will say this. Despite the fumble, as he, you know, that was from like the ten yard line. It was a great rush. Um, he plowed his way forward, and unfortunately for him, fumbled the ball. But he does have a nose for the end zone. When you get down near the goal line, Melvin Gordon's going to get in more often than not. This is a, an offense that's just hard to count on. I mean, it, it, Melvin Gordon. We when we brought him up, it was hey, look, he's going to have opportunities in an offense. But if if he doesn't hit, if he doesn't get into the end zone, it's been disappointing this is his first top 20 finish top 20 since week four e. so I, right. I wouldn't consider it prescriptive just, but it is a possibility every time you start somebody that gets you know 15 carries just let it wash over you you got a good game on your bench uh probably ezekiel elliott okay yeah okay. all right hey, okay signs of life cowboys okay okay Th this okay was, okay we can deal with this this is seven we were talking about okay. we wanted like 75 percent of the DAC Cowboys offense, and I think we got to like... They had been at 7% of yeah, the DAC offense. I think we got to 70%, but it was nice to see Andy Dalton there and have a team that was able to move the ball, mm -hmm. that was able to pass to Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. Um, if Gallup could have stopped dropping the ball, he, <laughs> he would have even had a good game, and, and Zeke had a good game. So maybe there are signs of life to this Cowboys offense that started the year hot that going forward there's fantasy relevance. Maybe. Antonio Gibson. Oh, baby. 16 for 94 and a touchdown. Still not getting targeted, but uh, keeps getting into the end zone. We get to see him on Thanksgiving, Mike. He, he will be the green bean casserole of your afternoon. How dare you call Antonio Gibson green he will bean be, casserole? He will be the pumpkin pie of the afternoon. Thank you very much. Okay. J.K. Dobbins. Was this a breakout game for Dobbins? 15 for 70 and a touchdown. Hopefully. It, it see it, watching Hopefully. the game. Hopefully, watching the game, all three of us noticed early on in the game just how incredible he looked, how bad Mark Ingram looked, and then as the game went on, all of a sudden it was Dobbins, and then it was Dobbins, and then it was. It, this wasn't a three-headed timeshare where it was thirty-three, no, it was thirty-three, not. thirty-three. Dobbins was getting the ball. Now this could be an Indianapolis Colts hot hand situation where they saw what we saw and they said, "Hey, we just want Dobbins." And next week, whoever it is, is, you know, maybe it's a different guy. Next week, they say JK. But oh. you know, very nice. No, I like that one. Um, <laughs> just just move on, though. Let it let it be funny and get going. Uh, get but, going. But Should we I, analyze that joke. No. <laughs> Mark Ingram was two for two, by the way. Gus Edwards, three for six. Yeah. It, hopefully this is the, the breakout that we wanted or that uh, fantasy players have been hoping for all year from JK Dobbins. Unfortunately, he gets to play the Pittsburgh Steelers pass this week. So this that is a me, brutal decision to make. Let me make the argument here for you. All right. This is a division game against an undefeated team. This is your hardest opponent. That's an Ingram game. Good point. <laughs> to me, that's you have to use whoever is the best player, not who's your veteran. Not, like Ingram has stunk. And J.K. Dobbins gives you your best chance to win against the most difficult defense. I I think this – I mean, I'm not saying, oh, it's going to be great. If he gets 15 carries against the Steelers, maybe he does nothing with it. But I, I believe that the change is real. All right. Uh, I'll believe it with another one. 
if he if he performs in this game, I'll be on board. Uh, we more confident about J.K. Dobbins moving forward, or more confident about Jonathan Taylor? Ooh, Ooh. that's a good question. Uh, At least with Jonathan Taylor, we've seen it a lot. We saw it the whole first half of the year where he wasn't, you know, doing what we wanted, which is a top five dominant back, but he was always relevant. He was top 24 every single week. And then after the bye, he had a couple games where it was like he wasn't getting on the field. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the beginning of this game, it was like, wait a minute, the first drive was Hines and then it was Wilkins, but they did move to Taylor. I think I would be more confident with Jonathan Taylor just because we've seen it a lot through the season. And this was just the second time that – Jonathan Taylor, old Johnny Taylor, had seen over 20 carries. I mean, they they finally gave him the workload. Yeah, previous week, 7, 6, 11, and then this past week, they were in a position where they uh, they leaned on him, mm -hmm. the mittens. He was putting the mittens on, and <laughs> he had a good game. Someone shipped him. Uh, all right, wide receiver studs, Adam Thielen. That catch for his touchdown reception, his one-hander, uh, uh, 45 degree angle, and then managed to tap the two toes. That that catch was phenomenal. We have phenomenal. eight. We have eight televisions on, plus a middle TV. So we have nine TVs. Got all the games on. <laughs> the ball's thrown into. You remember what I'm gonna say? Yes. The ball's thrown into the corner of the end zone to Thielen, and we're trying to monitor all these games. I see where the ball is. I see the corner of the end zone. I see him put one hand up. I turn away to the other games. I know that that's not a catch. I come back, and Mike's like, he called that for a touchdown. I couldn't believe it. Keenan Allen, nine, <laughs> 19 <laughs> targets, baby. 16 for 145 and one. I'll give the hitman some credit here. He he begged you, Foot Klein. He begged you to go pick up Keenan Allen weeks ago mm -hmm. because he, he knew what was coming. He talked about the schedule. He talked about what Herbert's doing, which is just <laughs> targeting Keenan Allen every play that he can, which is almost every play. Um, and goodness, I wish I don't have a single share of Keenan Allen through all my leagues and I'm a worse man for it. This is the, uh, you, you ever play a sports video game and you're the guy that wants to like run the whole offense. And then you play against somebody that's like, I've got two plays that always work. Yeah. And you are the guy who wants to be the like holistic run the whole offense always loses to the guy who runs the two plays that never fail. Yeah. It feels like it, when you're just spamming the same yes. play and mad, it, it, it it's working. And you're like, well, why do you keep doing that play? Stop why? it. How about you stop the play? <laughs> it reminds me of when Brandon Marshall was at the top of his game and Jay Cutler would target him 20 times a game because if you can throw it to Keenan Allen and he's always open and catches it, it's really what you should do. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the best. So incredible game from Keenan Allen, and it will continue. Tyreek Hill, 11 for 102 and 1. Uh, DJ Moore showed up in a big way. With yeah. P.J. Walker. As did Curtis Samuel. Yeah, 10 targets for Samuel, 11 for Moore. And we have been in the ho-hum game territory for Robbie Anderson for quite some time. Is D.J. Moore the better player to roster end of season? Ah, uh, I mean, he certainly has the, the bigger upside weekly, but what, what has Robbie Anderson been doing? Robbie lately? Anderson's been getting a ton of targets. And not doing much with it. He had nine targets this game. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, I would, ended would the take game, that. Yeah, ended the game with seven receptions. Yeah, I'll take that too. That's great. 46 yards. It's every week is like this lately, though. I mean, it's mm. unbelievable because this is a guy who's got the speed, who's got the downfield. You know, it, before he came to this team, he was always a down-the-field guy. You know, 20-yard receptions left, right, and center. And now, I mean, if you have seven receptions, a pretty bad game is 70 yards, 10 yards of right. reception. That's like, oh, man, that's not good. He almost had half of that. Yeah. That, it, I but think he's been very hard to – like, I benched him for Mark Andrews in a league because I was worried about P.J. Walker. And Robbie but, Anderson is – is. Uh, let me let me just read you his fantasy finishes since the right. nice start, okay? Week six on, 31-38, 44 36 64-36. So he's not been inside the top 30. So you got to understand that's the route tree he's running. Mm -hmm. there, I think the the real takeaway that we can all, you know, grasp onto is PJ Walker was fine. Like PJ Walker had a at least a few dimes that he threw out there and this it's not a complete surprise. He dominated in the XFL. It, the question was, you know, can you dominate in the XFL and will that translate over to the NFL 
and P.J. Walker can get it done. If if Teddy Bridgewater has to miss another game, you could confidently start D.J. Moore against the Minnesota Vikings, and you could probably confidently start Curtis Samuel as well. The P.J. to D.J., you're into that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nelson Aguilar looks great on the field, <laughs> It's, it's mostly. Cra- it's crazy. He still gives you a Philly-style drop once a game, but he is just – Pretty explosive, and uh, certainly the better wide receiver start in Las Vegas compared to Henry Ruggs. Tyler Lockett, we the Thursday game was great. Here's a player to talk about. Player I traded for at the deadline. 16 targets for Deontay Johnson. 12 for 111. Oh, me, oh, my. Yeah. And he look, he's, he's just awesome. Mm-hmm. His, his routes are great. He's great at catching the ball. His His – only thing that he is really needs to work on is staying healthy. But when he's out there on the field, I remember over the first couple of weeks, we kept telling people, you hold on to him. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be awesome. It's, we saw that in week one, but then he was injured and people were frustrated. Well, if you stayed the course, you are very happy because week in and week out, Deontay Johnson is a must start player. And when you look at the targets per game, he's up there with absolutely every, I mean, he's, he's there with, you know, the, yeah, he's the lead. <clears throat> And he's McKinnon had a, and Zen Hopkins and top ten finishes in three of the last five games, and uh, it's been impressive. One of the keys to staying healthy: don't step on the flag. Did you know that? Yes. Don't step on the flag yeah. that the referee throws. Juju. Is that went, what happened to Juju? Juju went down with the ankle injury after stepping on the flag on his birthday. That also, was his, yeah, happy birthday. Here's <laughs> step on this. Um, don't throw oh. flags at the players. Uh, I blame the ref. So he, uh, Juju, they're not expecting long-term injury with that, but he was in some pain, and uh, I think we'd all probably start Deontay one. I'd start Claypool two, yeah. Juju three. Yeah. Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, big play guy. Three yes. for 86 and a touchdown. One of my favorite guys to watch play football right now. Mike Williams, the four for 72. Michael Thomas, nine for 104. Let's not lose that in this game. He was heavily targeted. Did not get in the end zone, but they did take a shot at him. Uh, it, one of the D- Devontae Adams style screens, it just got stuffed. But also the nine for one hundred four. That I feel like that was decently early in the game. He, you know, it, they they were able to run the clock. They had the lead, and but uh, the when when he dropped back to throw the ball, it was definitely Michael Thomas was his first and second read, and then it was run. Tight ends: Travis Kelsey. Darren Waller, Mark Andrews, great, great, great this week. Nice to see. Dallas Goddard, uh, Jason start of the week, five for 77 and a two is down. About time. We yeah. saw something out of him. And Richard Rodgers was like, I'm here too. He's, <laughs> two I for mean, 48 and a touchdown. That's great uh, good, for, yeah. uh, for a tight end. Uh, both stiff-arming uh, Travis Fulgham on their way to the end zone. Do we believe in Unter as a, as a <laughs> weekly smash? Uh, yes, I believe in Unter Henry as a weekly smash because he had another end zone target in this game that, that he could have come down with and seems like uh, with Herbert passing for that quant- – you talk about the pie and mm-hmm. how small the pie is in Baltimore. The pie is huge. That's a huge pie. <laughs> it's a huge pie in Los Angeles. He's a growing boy. Needs to eat. Yeah. Unter is my by far my favorite nickname of this season. Is Cause, it? Because it's so stupid. And yes. it's like oh, – if you missed the the birth of the Unter nickname, is because we started calling Justin Herbert Justin Herbert. Yeah, but that's gone now. So we just dropped the H, which meant we had to drop the H for for Hunter. Oh, yeah, I believe you mean Hunter. <laughs> it's fabulous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I think we're, we're very sophisticated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You heard the, the the very nice music for the Monday Pun Day. That should tell you everything you need yes, to know. Yes, yes. And uh, Eric Ebron had a big game. And this next guy on the list. Do you list, want to dunk on Jason? No, uh, Jason has to read it. Okay. Uh, Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. Wait, I, I thought you wanted me to read it. Yeah. Uh, somehow got. <laughs> he won't let you. Four for 25. He had 25 yards in the game. And he had a touchdown. <laughs> so. I think I was right. So Dalton Schultz was in play? Dalton Schultz was whatever. <laughs> he got he got in the end zone. He was in play. And that's dumb. And I hope you didn't start him and instead started my start of the week, Dallas Goddard, because he did way better. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Stinkers of the Week. Presented by Odor Eaters. 
All right. Thank thank goodness I pivoted off of Matthew Stafford. That Ooh. game was that game was rough Ooh. on offense. He lost Amendola as well as uh you know, Kenny, Kenny Galladay. Galladay not being out there. And this was just gross. Uh it, no and and Swift. Right. No Swift, no Galladay, no Amendola, no points. Uh, they scored zero in the game, and that is bad for fantasy. Right. If you liked uh, Adrian Peterson, if you've got a, a, an addiction you're trying to get over like myself and you started carry on Johnson, um, it didn't work out because... Carry on, yeah. Carry on. yeah, Exactly. Nothing really matters. And, they, uh, the, to, be, to be fair, Marvin Jones had a spectacular touchdown that was called back on a ticky-tack garbage penalty. So if your league counts almost I'm points, just, that would be yeah, nice. No, no, I, just, no, 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 you're right. Just to give co context to the game. I felt so bad for because Matthew Stafford also has a hurt thumb. And he threw that touchdown, and he's running down the field, which is jubilation and joy. That was stripped from him. Matt Ryan, uh, Rulio 11, not in play here. 19, that's pretty bad. 19 for 30 on second run through. I'm out, I'm out. Rule 11, we'll leave it there. 19 for 37, though, and... Uh, Ugh. Ugh. That hamstring. Julio Julio is this just perfect physical specimen with yeah. this hamstring that's just not it's not fair. Yeah, it's I mean he the thing is though Hello. is Julio Hello. keeps coming back off these injuries and dominates and uh, you know, he'll do it again, but he is getting up there in age. Yep. So you always worry. Yeah. He's he's made sure to let you worry for years too. Uh running back stinkers let's break it down mm. concern level for miles sanders 16 for 66 no touchdowns no uh, yeah none he was on his way to score a touchdown and fumbled if you watched the game at all you would have seen the the philadelphia cleveland game it was a marshy wet mess and it led to a lower output in uh, fantasy production for most people. Yeah, he's still got 16 carries and, and, and three receptions. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I'm not worried at all. He had over 80 yards. It, it was certainly a very disappointing game that stunk, but he didn't look bad, and there were reasons for it, and the volume was there, so you're not worried. If you wonder if uh, Joe Mixon, David Johnson are any good, just look at what their backups can't do uh, when they're gone. Geo, Duke. <laughs> I, mean, Whoa. I thought you were saying what Geo <laughs> did. Well, Geo, Duke. Duke Duke. Duke Duke. Right. Geo Duke. Uh, Geo Duke Duke Duke. I mean, but this is back to back <laughs> weeks for for these guys. I mean, Duke Johnson in particular, everybody the whole world is oh, Duke Johnson should have been a, a yeah. feature back over his career. Ten for fifteen, bro. Yeah. After another I mean he's scoring five fantasy points as a starting running back, getting all of the work. Yeah. In so, a in a high scoring offense. I mean, I hate to say it, but I'd be playing Melvin Gordon over Duke Johnson. I'll oh, tell you that. Yes. Yeah, that is for sure. And Giovanni Bernard, uh, you can play him the next couple weeks. He's a – I don't think you I, – I think you can. I, I worry. Oh, man. wait, this, I forgot about – oh, goodness about gracious. Burrow? Yeah. Yeah, without Burrow, uh, this offense is not going to move. You might have – you know, I, I haven't gone back specifically, and I plan to, to go and look because we, we, we saw last year – um, you know, the, this quarterback, I don't remember how he utilized Ryan the run. Yeah, Ryan Finley in the, the passing game with running backs because if Gio could get, you know, sure, seven, eight, nine targets, then he'll be relevant. Gio, uh, Gio and Tariq Cohen are in the same stage of their career where they don't have the early career juice that made them explosive. And you put them in these positions, and unless they're getting into the end zone, you're not feeling great. So uh, J.D. McKissick, uh, J.D. McKitting. Last week, I mean, a million he, targets. This week, just three for 26. Game script, man. Washington was handling the game, and that yeah. turned into Antonio Gibson actually out-snapping J.D. McKissick. Dallas uh, on Thanksgiving, uh, that should be a good game. Uh, I th Can you go back to McKissick? I mean, it's only saw four targets, but – Two of the last three weeks, you know, double digit targets. Yeah, I, I think you can go back to him. It's it's not a guarantee. The the following week against Pittsburgh, you know they will have to dump the ball off a billion times. It'll be for very few yards, but if you're in a PPR, uh you you're certainly right. not moving on from McKissick as far as like roster wise. Yeah. I mean at the same time they're playing Pittsburgh. So you No, I know. You don't feel good. But if you get if you get ten receptions <laughs> right. and, and, and it's thirty yards, that's I mean <laughs> I'm fine with that in my flex. 
I just don't know if you're guaranteed to get that. That's all I'm saying. Naeem Hines or J.D. McKissick, who are you more likely to be back on? Because Hines McKissick uh, was just three for, what, 31? Yep, I would go McKissick. Uh, okay, let's talk wide receiver stinkers of the week. Juju's at the top. Happy birthday to the ground. Uh, four for 19. He was going to go off in the fourth. I know it. But he uh, we went off yeah. in the fourth. Yeah, See, yeah off the field? Yeah. Oh, is this because you were you had some confidence with Juju going into the week, and yeah. now you want to just bury it under the injury? Absolutely, I right. got my out. D- <laughs> DJ Chark, how about this one? Uh, yeah, how about this one? Jake Luton sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's the problem. Four for forty-one for DJ Chark. Jake Luton was negative fantasy points in our league format. So. There were uh, about half the plays that you watch where, when you look over to that TV, you see the ball flying up like it was you know just thrown underhand style backwards just up in the air and it was oh like a bride tossing the flowers over her 100 see who gets married next because which he, defensive back gets married that's what happened over and over and over as he's getting pushed back or hit or sacked oh. he just throws these balls yeah. up so as his arm four, gets hit. four four members of the secondary are getting married that's, in the next year that's right yeah, yeah. he Luton was up against it but I, does this mean we actually see Gardner again before the end of the year? I mean, one would hope if you want any confidence in in anybody on that team. Chark is you've always got a shot. It's just mm-hmm. it's gross. I mean, you yeah. you have to get lucky. You have to have. I I'm worried that it's like that David Blau long touchdown last year to Kenny Galladay, where it's like, oh, everything's gonna be fine. Like you had the long touchdown to Chark mm-hmm. with the second play from Luton, and then it's false confidence. So. We'll see. Chark's yep. a good player. It's just tough when you're not having sustained drives. Mm-hmm. Same with T. Higgins now, right? T. Higgins is a good player. He had 10 yeah. targets. He only had three catches in this game. Yeah, this, well, Washington's a great defense. Yeah, they are. So it, it was already a tough matchup, and then you lost your franchise quarterback about halfway through. And we are all officially in the, in the just incredible NFC East. We are officially rooting. For Alex Smith, yes. oh yes, oh yes, yeah, and Join Ron us. Rivera, and yes. Ron Rivera to win the division. Yeah, sorry, other NFC East teams. Yeah, sorry, Travis Fulgham. Seven targets, one catch, eight yards. It's been bad. Yeah. In his defense, his quarterback is the worst. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Oh no. Carson Wentz has a head problem. <laughs> the turns have tabled. The turns have tabled <laughs> indeed, uh, because Carson Wentz ha- is broken above the shoulders. He is broken right now, and I hope that he gets a great off season and can come back in. And you don't just mean the beard. I don't just mean the beard. Uh, but I, I mean, he's, he's broken above the beard as well, because that he, he's got some <laughs> mental problems, every single play in that pocket. He How do you looks, take that safety? It's, it's, you take it by having a broken brain. There's no <laughs> way you hold on to that ball for as long as he did while you're in the end zone. D- every- Doug Peterson came out quickly, said he's the starter next week. Never thought about benching him. But here's Jalen Hurts. You drafted him. You drafted him. What does that say about Jalen Hurts at practice? Well, I don't know. I, yeah, I I think Doug Peterson's committed to the guy, but the fact that you took a quarterback in the second round. Uh, this is the opposite it, of the Aaron Rodgers effect, yeah. right? It didn't yeah, motivate. It, did, no, like, it was a demotivator. Yeah, it hurts, man. Um, Jarvis. Nah. No, I mean there are no options in the passing game for Cleveland ever. You well, can't. It, you can't. Baker it, does nothing ever. Right. Here's the thing. This is now three of the last four games. Just horrific we- weather in Cleveland. I keep asking them to put a roof on it. They refuse. Thankfully, they are on the tarp. road next week. At least a tarp. <laughs> Just let them play football and not have to play some version of it that accounts for. This is their version, though. This is their victory this, version. This is how they like it. If you, this is sloppy. the software. They <laughs> extra sloppy. They 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 only want to run the football. So that's fair. I mean, it doesn't matter. And um, mm, Holly Wolf. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I look. Jeez. Uh, I already took the L weeks ago on on Holly Wolf, and I am fine with. He's he's just gone. I don't care. The the receiving yards. 
the, re the receptions, what we're seeing from Lamar Jackson is Mark Andrews and nobody else. That's the rule. Mark Andrews, nobody else. Move on. Nothing to see here. Jared Cook, Hayden Hurst, Noah Fant, Austin Hooper, stink, stink, stunk, no good. I think uh, the the bigger headline for fantasy players is don't put your confidence in Noah Fant as an every week start. Look for pivot options if the matchups are better, right? He's not a... I think everybody tries to find the tight end from the beginning of the year where they say, I'm just going to lock him in. I think the important thing with Fant, um, with Hurst, who had no catches, is that you're just looking for the right matchup play. Pay attention to when we bring up waiver names. Pay attention to the streaming options at tight end. Well, and I've already, Hurst, Hurst is, like we pointed out, Hurst is, just seems to be so locked in to needing Julio Jones on the field. I have no idea what what dark magic is going on there when, when Julio is out that Hayden Hurst can't do anything. Yeah, it, the nice thing is is that there is someone coming to the rescue. Uh, I'm so excited for this week, and I was so upset with myself. I could not make the transaction I wanted to make. I did not have enough roster availability, or I would have made it. Someone's coming to the rescue at the tight end position? Someone is coming to the rescue at the tight end position. He's oh. my start of the week, and he is the biggest waiver wire pickup this week. I know week. who it is. Is Jordan freaking Reed, man. He is healthy. Who He's coming off up? a bye. Did you? No. No, did you really? <laughs> no, you didn't, Mike. You're darn right I did. No, I assume nobody <laughs> did. I was gonna I was gonna spend all my family. Oh uh, well I no. Because I picked him up. Was that <laughs> yeah. your uh Sunday morning <laughs> Sunday morning pickup? That is my Sunday morning pickup. When you drop big man? That is correct. And you didn't even flex it yesterday? You waited for the show? Oh, my goodness. I had no idea, Mike. <laughs> I'm so upset right now. Let, so, peel back the curtain here. Here's what, what happened. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, this. I didn't know this was going to happen. You don't oh. need him, though, right? So Who I've did been, you start this week? I've, okay, so here's what happened. <laughs> I've been rolling with Jared Cook and Noah Fant. Two, you know, good -ish options at tight end and playing the matchups, and they and I don't have any confidence in either of them. Jared uh, Fant has been injured, and Jared Cook just got a huge quarterback downgrade to the passing game. And so I decided I'm going to drop Jared Cook, and I kept going back in my head. Am I going to drop Jared Cook and pick up Jordan Reed mm -hmm. and play Noah Fant, or am I going to drop Jared Cook and pick up and play Logan Thomas, who I thought was a better play. I, I, cho I chose poorly, <laughs> and I played Logan Thomas, and I, and I would have paid for Reed. Oh! Well, if it makes you feel better, I paid $0. It Why does. don't I have a boom shakalaka <laughs> button right here? Oh, my goodness. That is, I need that. I need the boom shakalaka. That was a boom shakalaka dunk. I can't believe and you, know you what? have Mike, him. Mike did everything he was supposed to do to make you pay for that decision. Oh, man. That was exactly how it's supposed to go. I was so excited for this whole week. I've literally been into the Thursday dock already and started <laughs> deleting out starts so I could put in Jordan Reed because he is my guy this so week. Your start of the week is... Is Mike starting tight end? Oh, my goodness. Is that what I heard? That's uh, the worst. That's uh, the worst. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka, indeed. I was under that net while you oh. came down right on me. <laughs> Stink oh, man. Stinkers of the week, uh, including Jason, presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best uh. in foot odor defense. We want to thank Pristine Auction for for bringing today's show your way. James Robinson signed jersey, uh, $61, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. That'll do it for today's episode of the show, and we'll be back with waivers tomorrow. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> I'm so sad. Rule 86. Uh, uh, you got 86. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Oh, and Foot Clan, don't forget about Simply Safe's incredible deal that's going on this week. Home Security is having a huge holiday sale, 50% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera the system has an arsenal of sensors and cameras to protect every inch of your home you can set it up yourself in just about 30 minutes get up to 50 percent off simply safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com slash 
footballers. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Oh,